स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया So this will come later. Okay. Now I just want to very quickly go through some results. What you will see from now on are nothing for you to really learn or acquire. Is just to show you how results are presented. Okay. So this is the input data mostly. So we chose two engines of 40 horsepower motor, and we said with that you get a speed of 82.2 kilometers per hour. Okay. And here are some values. So the balloon is around 80 percent. The inflation fraction is around 80 percent. 206 meter cube is the balloon net volume upon 1000 meter cube. So 1 minus 206 upon 1000 is the inflation fraction. Okay, I have already told you about the height, etc. Um, speed has been uh, met. This also I have already given you. So the gondola was. This is a demo airship. It has to be light. It has to be made quickly. So either welded steel tube framework with FRP, PU foam, etc., or a composite version. This was a simple gondola that we designed. So you can see there are two ducted motors, one on each side, and just a small gondola. We are given two seats, but actually it can take only one pilot. the other seat is meant for mounting a camera or payload if we can reduce the weight somehow by using composites maybe then you can use the next seat to either carry a passenger or to carry some kind of a payload which the pilot can operate maybe a camera okay landing gear so what we did is we looked at an aircraft called as hansa available with with nal studied the landing gear and we found oh yes we can make a landing gear similar to that these are the answers of the sizing of the stabilizer they are just numbers i leave the numbers with you then as i said we went around and searched for engines which are available and cheap we found that there were around 10 engines and these were the ones which are short listed one of them is available within india by vehicles r&d establishment in ahmednagar 37 horsepower i think then we thought let us go for some thrust vectoring system so our concept was to have a louvre type system so that you can deflect a series of flat plates which can deflect the slip stream rather than tilting the engine or tilting the nozzle we said we will just tilt the slip stream by flat surfaces we could never get a chance to build this but this was one project and this is still available as a project for someone who is interested in developing a thrust vectoring system students have come and worked on thrust vectoring system with me in fact there is a team of three girls from a college who have who have made this kind of a duct recently but still it's an open problem for a bigger airship they did it for a remotely controlled airship okay then uh, if you want to make it four seater little bit of more work okay i'll just go through how you determine the center of gravity location on an airship so we are in, our main aim is that we should locate two things the balloon and the gondola they are under our control everything else gets fixed by its function and position you can move the gondola slightly forward backward and you can probably move the balloon inside so what is the aim the aim is that when equal amount of air is pumped in the two balloon i should not get a cg shift you have seen in the calculations in our class during tutorials that the weight of the air of the balloon is quite large i think it was 53 kg or so in one problem for a big airship that can change cg drastically it's like putting 53 kg weight at one particular place 
So it's important that as you suck in air, you don't go nose down or nose up. You should remain in the same trim. So we also wanted to have center of gravity below center of buoyancy in the equilibrium condition, so that if there is no angle of attack and there is no wind, we should not have any moment. The airship should trim. And location of the fuel tank should be such that when even when fuel is consumed, the CG will shift, it will go up because fuel is on the bottom and the fuel is being consumed. That should not be too much. All of these are going to affect the trim condition of the airship. So, there are some references used. For example, there is this XYZ reference at the nose, then there is a reference for the center of gravity of the gondola, CG, etc., etc. And then for each component, we actually did detailed calculations, we made a 3D model and got the likely CG location. For example, if you see number 5, number 5 is a catenary, which are basically ropes that go inside the airship to hold the gondola or transfer the load on the top. Then you number, number 10 is rigging, number 9 is the stabilizer, 15 is the controls, 4 is the airlines or the cables. So, every item we have accurately try to locate where they will be and add the weight of that. Gondola has got so many items, instruments, landing gear, ballast, payload, all of them where they will be and then find the center of gravity, envelope and patches. Then the two balloon, their geometrical sizing. They will not be exactly hemispherical because they will be having a contour of the envelope. So, we have to match with that and do exact calculations. Similarly, for stabilizer and rigging, gondola. Let us go to the next one, tax cargo airship. This becomes 70 meters in length, quite large. Okay. And the envelope dia is 17.5 meters. So, it is a big structure. So, what are the inputs for it? The inputs were same as that for the demo airship, but for the payload and the envelope shape. So, for this we did not want to go for a L by D of 3 GNVR shape. We went for what is called as a double ellipsoid shape, two ellipsoids, one behind the other. And the ratio of the major axis is root 2. So, this distance from the center this distance is going to be root 2 times this distance, 1.7 times this distance. This is one shape which has been recommended in literature. This is called as the NPL shape. NPL stands for National Physical Laboratory. It is a laboratory in UK which came up with this shape and they said this is a good shape for airships because L by D equal to 4 and it is slender. So, for airships it is a very good shape. So, we took it as the candidate. It is not too much different from a lip from uh, GNVR. But this is a very uh, funny thing because GNVR shape has L by D of 3. So, I have to check this and get back to you. All right, this is this number I have already given you. This is the estimated performance for a range of 500 kilo, kilo, kilometers. This is the number we got. Again, these are numbers for the stabilizer. For this, we had some power plants in mind. So, we looked at three or four engines commercially available, did the complete layout and sizing of the gondola. And then the most important thing is the sensitivity analysis. When you change some parameter, how much does it affect the weight, size, capacity, etcetera? So, look at now between unducted fan and ducted fan. So, the ducted fan requires 30 percent lower horsepower. You can imagine the savings in the weight. Just by ducting it, it becomes 30 percent lower horsepower. But the propulsion system weight, now this weight comes down, although there is a duct, but the weight becomes less because the engine is lighter. Okay. Empty weight is also a little bit less, fuel weight is 30 percent less and therefore, the payload is straight away around 30 percent more or 25 percent, 25 kg more. 
So, by using ducted propellers, you can carry 25 kg more payload. Okay. Then, this is information that you should keep in mind mentally because this information is very much applicable to almost all kinds of airships. So, there are two informations here. One is if you have a payload and if you increase the pressure altitude say from two and a half to four kilometers for the same operating temperature of ISA, the payload reduces linearly. So, what can carry 50 kg at 4000? can carry 150 kg at 2500 and if you take it further to zero altitude you will find more as I said to you the airship that carries only the pilot can carry four passengers and pilot at sea level. So, it is a straight away linear relationship. So, what we learn from here is in airships there is a drastic change in the payload capacity either when the operate ambient temperature increases because of the super pressure and the super, uh, temp, uh, super heating effects or as the pressure altitude increases. Both of them are going to hit the payload carrying capacity. This information I have already given you in the previous graph. Now, I am just plotting it reverse. I am plotting the same data for various maximum altitudes. So, all of them is, uh, decrease linearly. So, 50 kg payload becomes 120 kg payload if the temperature is reduced that means, if you operate in the cold environment, you can carry more payload. Okay. Similarly, effect of speed. So, speeds of 80, 70, 60 for a given pressure altitude, you have to go vertically on the lines. So, you see there is a small change. There is a change, but a small change. So, 250 kg payload is available with 80 kilometers per hour maybe 275 with 70, maybe 300 with 60. So, 25 kg more for 10 kilometers per hour difference, but the loss in the payload because the pressure altitude is much larger. Similarly, a comparison of two engines, somebody was wondering why we are looking at petrol engine and diesel engines, because the availability of diesel is always going to be better than petrol, but interestingly as the range increases there is a crossover point beyond this range it is the petrol engine which gets lower payload than the diesel engine. So, even payload wise you are better off. So, for longer range airship use diesel engine, for short range airship use a petrol engine. Similarly, we plotted out the L by D ratio. How does L by D ratio? Because as you know L by D ratio is going to affect the aerodynamics. So, there is a peak, it is a very interesting uh, result. It tells you that this L by D ratio of around 3 or 3.05 is actually the peak, this is the GNVR shape. So, you make it less than this and the payload decreases, you make it more than this the payload decreases. In one case the drag increases and hence there is a larger heavier engine, in one case the weight increases because of the larger surface area. In both the cases, the payload is lower than what you can get. Okay. But for you know, if you look at uh, changing in the cruising velocity, you find that 4 is the best, the highest payload is available with L by D equal to 4 for various speeds. So, this y axis is payload in this graph and speed in this graph, this is just like putting two graphs in one. Okay. What happens with helium purity? Notice that when the purity of helium is 100 percent, if the payload is 115 kg, it shoots down to only 50 kg if the purity is 91 percent. So, there is a linearly reducing effect of helium purity. This is because the buoyant lift becomes less straight away. The impurity which will be air will not only reduce the buoyancy, but also increase the weight. Then payload and velocity versus engine power. So, on the y axis you have either payload in kg which is the red line 
or velocity in kmph which is the blue line on the bottom on the x axis you have the engine so you notice that as the payload decreases the engine horsepower follows suit and as the cruise velocity increases the power the as the cruise velocity increases i mean as the engine power increases you can get slightly more cruise speed also blue line goes up okay then we wanted to know suppose we make a airship which goes from 0 to 4000 delta h so we found that instead of 20% it's 34% balloon size so the inflation fraction will reduce from around 80 to 66 and because of that you have 9 kg more weight so that means the envelope the 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 payload capacity which was 77 kg will become further less if you have a hazard hazard delta